Welcome back to episode three of Vakil Lane, and we promised you that we'll get somebody on board who'll really shock us with facts and things that we ordinarily wouldn't be able to think. And we got Pushpesh Pansar. He doesn't really need an introduction. You can just Google him up and see all the things he has done, from food history to inter- international relations to taking UPSC interviews to giving out theories about everything. So you've been famous for a while now, and it's not that you have a fan base; you have a cult base. Be either people know about, don't know about you, or people are absolutely biggest fans. That I don't know if that's fame. I think it's more of notoriety. Uh, so let's leave it at that. Not a notoriety. Uh, interestingly, notoriety. You have been one of the few people who are at a an advanced stage of life. and have lived and experienced a great deal in comparison to youngsters like us and have been open about food and sex and sex in particular your ted talk about food and sex was there an adverse reaction you got from people around you that what are you talking about actually there has been a rumor the ted talk, ted talk was not about food and sex the ted talk was about food in the making of the indian nation and somewhere in between food and sex were compared as so two basic drives in human life in which everybody is interested and sex begins after puberty and ends before you get really old but food begins before you are born even a mother who's expecting is given panjeeri and khana and the child is given anaprashan and much after a person is dead there is shraddha and pindan which is khana of sorts and as it says in vedas uh, upanishads actually na cha vitena tarpan yo manushya the man is not delivered Uh, till food is offered so i think food is more basic food is what makes sex possible so there was just this one aside about food and sex which people enjoyed and it got a bit confused that it was food and sex talk it was hardly any sex in the talk but food and making of the nation but that one statement about food and sex being the most important drives in how a human being conducts himself is something that you have said repeatedly even in the no, recent but, but people forget the emphasis i say food is more important than sex and i mean it and i mean it because it begins before sex it ends after sex and sex is only possible if your body is well nourished otherwise you would not even have an erection otherwise you would not be able to enjoy a, enjoy sex at all so i think malnutrition nutrition are things which are correlated with sex and vitality and vim and vigor jo istahar hote the na ki khoi hui jawani phir se wapas karo jawani ki kusangat ki wajah se aapki aapka budhapa bhi barbad ho jayega variety so the point is that there is nourishment which food gives and that makes everything else possible i think that is what people should remember most definitely uh, i am not just buying that point from you right now but a great part of it all is also because how well you articulate it and before i get into the topic of food and laws around food and why i want to do this podcast i want to know what did you do to become so articulate like were you always a great speaker or no i was not i was not i was very nervous about speaking in public and so on but my vocabulary and my command over words i owe to my mother my mother was taught uh, by ravindra tagore in shanti niketan she was one of her favorite students before she fell in love and married my father she was doing research in comparative linguistics with amart sen's grandfather the nobel laureate and great professor tan yun shan the chinese she was working on retranslations of lost texts from sanskrit and pali back from chinese and tibetan to uh, to uh, sanskrit and pali so she spoke half a dozen languages bengali gujarati uh, tamil kannada odia assamese besides english hindi gujarati she treated as her mother tongue so i was brought up in a household where words were used but i was a precocious child and i was home schooled and i was nervous interacting with people outside you know you the kids of my age were not interested in things in which i was interested in so it made me a little uncomfortable gawky adolescent and i was shy of uh, speaking in public i think i got over my shyness of public speaking when i chose teaching as a career you can't go to a class and not not talk and i started teaching in delhi university about 60 years back 
and it was in Ramjas College. Yes. The classes were very small. The honors class was 10 people. And I still remember the class. There were two bodybuilders, Madan Singh Yadav and Sadan Singh Yadav. We have, we have, we have heard that story. And they snowed in the class. Yes. It was slightly better than your classes in NCU. <laughs> so I had to talk my way and I was closer to them in age than I was uh, to other teachers. So there was a relationship which was naturally I transited from a tongue-tied, shy youngster to a glib teacher who was appreciated by his students. This did lots for my confidence. And that has clearly reflected well in terms of... No, I think I must gratefully acknowledge another role. I was in charge of the newspaper and education program in late 70s, early 80s in Bennett Coleman Company Times of India. I went to schools and I talked to students from class 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, except the board years 10th and 12th, and these kids were naughty, they had, you had to hold their attention, you had to crack jokes, you had to give them quizzes, puzzles and things of that kind. That, uh, again, I think encouraged me to ad-lib, to improvise, talk, hold attention. One didn't have to learn it from any public speaking course. You exposed yourself to more and more people, diverse and diverse audiences, and you did. But one can expect that you will have a point of view which doesn't come easily to us because either we'll have to refer to our notes or our books and it comes very easily to you and that is a kind of retention and the way you access your uh, memory. No, I think it happens to all of us. We don't use the full capacity of our brain, most of us. All of us can remember whatever is of interest to us. Abhi, you know, we are talking and Tanmay said, have you read this book? And he remembered not only that book, but the author, but the film program on that and all related things. So all of us remember things, details about things which interest us. But we don't uh, share it with everybody. And it happens, the more you use your memory, the easier it becomes to recall things, you know. But it has, it has big failures. Yesterday, last night, I almost lost my nerve. I thought that I was becoming senile and suffering from dementia. I forgot the name of a place between Hapur and uh, Delhi on the road. Okay. It was Pilkhua. I, I would remember everything. Jagya ka naam pee se shuru hota hai. Vaha handloom factory hai. Vaha pe ek flyover hai. Uske aage piche But I, I could even remember a young boy from Pilkhua who had come in an NCC camp to Bhavali where my parents were then. And my, he, he had come to get treated from my father and my father talked to him about a classmate in Pilkhua who was with him in medical college. Everything else I would remember. But I would not remember the name Pilkhua. But I tried to Google it on the map. But before I could go to the Google map, it suddenly it came as a flash, Pilkwa. So uh, it happens. At times you forget things unexpectedly. At times things come back to you from years past. And do you think it's because like there's an over storage of memory? I don't think, I don't believe in the, the hard disk dish crashing at all. As Raj was saying a little earlier, like it crash ho jata hai. Mere khan crash ho kuch nahi hota. The human brain has a capacity which is far more than terabyte disks and so on. Right. Nothing crashes and you can recover the data. I mean, even if it crashes, you know, you can have redundancy in the system. There is so much built-in redundancy in the human brain and so much parallel processing in neural networks. So the synaptic connections are made in any case. Right. I mean, he seemed to have this problem with the apples. But if you are doing a RAID array with your apple and if you are working on a Macintosh Pro studio model, chances are very little that anything will crash. Anything you have taken, crash. I mean, I don't buy the theory, I'm machinery, hai, iska kya to fail kari sakti hai. <laughs> I have never bought the theory. It means it's either bad maintenance, bad knowledge, bad command of the machinery. Your uh, ideas remind me of this professor, Dr. Robert Sapolsky from Stanford who talks about the neurological brain and the synaptic uh, responses that human beings have are just unexplored. It's never the case that uh, they are uh, erring or they are defaulting on some part. It's just that you we don't know about it. See, our model of the human brain keeps changing. Uh, when early 20th century, Sherrington talked of the shining loom. It was a loom which wove a tapestry or a fabric together. Then it became a computer model of uh, the brain. But we don't know what brain is, you know. So the, There are lots of theories. There are lots, lots of theories and they keep uh, keep changing. As our knowledge of human anatomy increases, uh, the electrochemistry of brain becomes better. And when we say the emotions are basically electrochemical reactions in the brain. Yes. Uh, one of them is that, uh, one of the underrated theories is that our neural networks are very much in sync with how mycelium is and the mycelium network is 
a much more developed version of our brain in the first place absolutely so till we know for sure uh, I, i don't know whether we'll know for sure ever because there's the mind body dichotomy observer observing something which is there the limits of knowledge which you can have from days of the cartes the mind body dualism is continued but the fact is that you find it out yourself that the human brain has great capacity to store data and that data has to be correlated and in a variety of, is a, is a random access uh, disk right and you, how you correlate it is up to you what you do you know so that's it interestingly uh, the book that we were talking about how to think like leonardo da vinci uh, it tells us that how leonardo da vinci one of course, the, yes. a genius of his time and how he exploited the true potential of his brain in comparison to any other human being a brain has the potential to process 10 raised to the power 21 thoughts at any given point of time and that is a huge number uh, no but let's not get uh, bogged down with the numbers you made a very interesting statement think like leonardo da vinci and you in the same breath say leonardo da vinci is a genius a genius is not an average person so what a genius does is not possible for everybody else you can't train yourself to be a leonardo da vinci and leonardo da vinci had a very interesting life he lived in medici times and he was deviant in sex he exploited his apprentices but he covered a range from aerodynamics to human anatomy to painting to sculpture to music and he was living the time of the great renaissance so you have uh, a person in a particular time thinking in a particular manner right. which is very different so you is a nice title for a book but uh, it would be a very conceited person even today who would think that he would read a book and th- start thinking like leonardo da vinci is like del carnegie at a superior level how to win friends and influence people yes yeah uh, it, it a very relevant uh, way to look at it a very 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 relevant coming back to the topic sir uh, food and india and the law that we have the f- nutritional requirements that are required are calories and whether you have a caloric deficit or whether you are having a calor a calorific surplus is something that we look at as a metric or india mein isi tarike se ek aadmi ki rozana diet ko dekha gaya hai which doesn't really reflect well ki nutritionally us aadmi ko kya chahiye hota hai the amount of carbs the number of proteins the different vitamins and and while i agree that since independence we have had a f- shortage of food and in production as well as in distribution being able to distribute it to people to a point of time where now we have a food surplus khana waste we are like the food corporation of india waste karta hai khana dispose of karna padta hai what is your take on that that a- look i have i have two three points to make in the beginning i do not think that the problem arises with independence of india india has always had a food shortage problem from times immemorial let's put it bluntly uh, during the british colonial period there were several famines and the british undertook certain programs and promulgated certain legal regulations to <coughs> avoid famines or control famine on provide famine relief so ye jo akal padte the log bhukmari se marte the it has been there earlier you go back to even uh, epic times you have descriptions in mahabharat ki raja bada kharab tha because of his sins desh mein akal pad gaya tha you go to hitopadesh panchatantra uh, you say there was a famine there was a drought and the people were leaving their villages even the birds and fish were being trans- turtles were being transported across so i do not think that we start with the assumption that the malnutrition problem or the food shortage problem is only post independence what made things much worse in 20th century was the great bengal famine which was a man made famine during war period when the grains were directed elsewhere for either the requirements of british and american soldiers or fodder to pigs in america and indians died this is very been very well documented now but the laws of food go beyond this when you when you had independent india and much before we come to how food is wasted in silos of fci and so on uh, the government had to face with shortages and these shortages were partly because of the war partly because of the refugee problem and people were not having enough to eat and food was being black marketed food was being hoarded and the earliest set of laws about food were about against black marketing against adulteration and these have continued to be on the law book 
till the present date. There is one part. If you go back to other historical accounts, you have very interesting descriptions. When Al Baruni writing in his Kitabul Hind in 1000 years ago says that in Hindustan mein, the average man lives on a gruel uh, made of some lentils and rice in a porridge like consistency, which was a khichdi. And unfortunately, what has happened is that when we talk of a glorious Indian past, wonder that was India, we concentrate on food. Ki Punjab was a land of milk and honey. Maha to ye hota tha. Soni ki chidiya tha. Jo mogliya khana tha, usme ye khana tha. We tend to forget that that was the food of the elite. The poor Indian did not have that food to eat. Hindustan mein jo phrase tha, wo tha do jun ka khana. Two square meals a day. Right. Most people could not even afford that. So forget about the rest of it. Rest of proteins and carbs and vitamins and so on. And uh, most people had only one meal. Ki do jun ka khana to aspiration tha. Hmm. Ek jun ka khana milta tha. Mostly hmm. wo millet tha. Now, there is another interesting thing. Our knowledge of what a balanced meal is dates to early 20th century when vitamins were discovered. Right. And then you said ki balance ke liye vitamin chahiye, macronutrients chahiye. Uh, Indians have always eaten carbs. We had carbs. We had wheat, we had lentils, which was highly unassimilable. In Europe, in a colder climate, they had a diet that was based on meat. Right. Meat was their diet. In a colder climate, they had a diet based on meats, basically. So, it was a high protein diet in their climate. In certain parts of India, like in Kashmir, it was a high protein diet along the coastal area where the fish was consumed. It was some element of protein into their diet. But the majority of the heartland of India subsisted on a high carb diet. Today it's very fashionable. Hai. Vegan diet. So our diet was vegan. Hi thi na. You remember that verse? Rukhi suki khai ke thanda paani pi Dekh parai chupdi mat lal chave ji Jiske paas ghi lagane ko roti pe nahi tha. This gentleman asked me Is me thoda ghi laga de, butter laga de, double roti me. So hmm. it reminded me of the same. Ki humara khana to ghi bhi nahi tha, to dairy hmm. bhi nahi tha. Gharib aadmi ke liye dahi bhi nahi tha. Hmm. To wo to dal chawal khata tha. Roti saag khata tha. It was vegan diet only. Isme ye vegan diet thi na. Absolutely. Aur chemical fertilizer humare paas thai nahi. So our diet organic bhi si. This fad of organic food and vegan food doesn't amuse me one bit. Now let's get back to your basic question about balanced diet and nutrition. Last year I was working, not last year, year before last, just before COVID hit us, I was working on a book on Gandhi and his food fads. And Gandhi was writing about a nutritious diet for Indians as early as 1920s. He was a vegetarian. But he was not a vegetarian of the Indian vegetarian variety. He had become a fashionable vegetarian in England of the English vegetarian society variety. And he was saying that in Hindustan, a man is weak. Because he does not get balanced diet. Nahi milti. So Gandhi ji had just got into this vitamin bandwagon. He hmm. wanted to eat vitamin chahiye, aur carbs, or, but Gandhi ji did not propagate meat eating. So your vegetable protein is that you Dal si milna chahiye tha. Hmm. And he said, Ki agar aapne kuch aur khana hai palwal, so he said, why doesn't the Indian farmer eat uh, or villager eat uh, fruits? Because his theory was that he sells fruits. So hmm. he can't eat fruits. So he sells fruits to get grains. Now all this is a very complex and simplified uh, comment wow. on Indian agronomy and so on. But Indians have lived happily with whatever they thought was a balanced diet. Ki agar aap roti dal ke sang khare ho ya chawal ke sang khare ho. आपको एक वेजिटेबल प्रोटीन मिल रहा है उसमें माइक्रोन्यूट्रिएंट्स आपको मिल रहे हैं आप लीफी ग्रीन वेजिटेबल्स सलाद में नहीं खा रहे हो मगर खा रहे हो तो मुझे लगता है नहीं कि दिस इंपोर्टिंग द वेस्टर्न एंड न्यूट्रिशनल मॉडल एंड अब वेस्ट को ये लगता है कि ओबिसिटी हो रही है बिकॉज दे आर ओवर ईटिंग मीट तो उनको लाइफ स्टाइल डिजीजेज हो रही हैं लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी बढ़ गई है तो कैंसर ऑफ कोलोन हो रहा है ब्लड प्रेशर हो रहा है आर्टरीज क्लॉक कर रही हैं हमारे यहाँ इसकी गुंजाइश ही नहीं थी आदमी मेहनत कर रहा था ही वॉज बर्निंग आउट इनफ कैलरीज सो दिस इज वेयर द कैलोरी वैल्यू मेजर कम्स इन टू पिक्चर बिकॉज देर इज ओनली वन मेजर विच यू थाट कैन बी डन कि एक आदमी के जिंदा रहने के लिए या हेल्दी रहने के लिए इतनी कैलरीज उसको इस नेचर ऑफ जॉब में मिलनी चाहिए नाउ माई प्रॉब्लम विद डैट इज कि जो आपका दूसरा सवाल था अंशुल कि वाई नॉट टॉक अबाउट हाउ मच प्रोटीन दिस इज बीन वर्कड आउट people have worked out the trouble is that it is difficult to apply in a impoverished society at home ki maine char chhatak dal banayi hai wo char chhatak dal khane wale panch log hain to wo jo dal ka weight measure tha aur us dal ka jo pani jaisi patli thi ya gaadi thi jo ghar ke char logon mein bati and in a patriarchal society the male members ate first so what was left over for half the population 
थ्रूज द स्टेटिस्टिक्स फॉर सिक्स कि मैंने इतना लिंटिल तो वेजिटेबल बनाया था मैंने इतना वीट भी बनाया था मगर किसने कितना खाया एक घर में एंड अमर सिंह इज वर्क ऑन दिस एंटाइटलमेंट एंड अपॉर्चुन इन ईटिंग एट होम सो द ग्रेट डिस्पैरिटी बिटवीन वॉट द मेल सेट वॉट हायर कास्ट मेल सेट वॉट वेल ऑफ मेल सेट इज वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वॉट द वॉट यू हैव एन आइडियल पिक्चर कि इतने में कार्ब इतना आपका कार्ब होगा इतना आपका शुगर्स होंगे इतना आपका फैट होगा जो गरीब आदमी था उसके लिए फैट कड़वा तेल था नारियल का तेल था मूंगफली का तेल था घी कहाँ था इट वॉज द वीगन फैट फ्रॉम वैदिक स्टैंड पॉइंट सर देर इज नो सच थिंग इज अ वैदिक स्टैंड पॉइंट सर यू नो आई यू विल परमिट मी टू इंटरप्ट यू राइट हेयर इट इज बिकम द फ्लेवर ऑफ द मंथ कि वैदिक फूड वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स वैदिक नॉलेज वैदिक एवरीथिंग लुक वेदर्स आर अ वेरी एंशंट बॉडी ऑफ नॉलेज बट वेदर्स आर नॉट इंसाइक्लोपीडिया ब्रिटेनिका अपडेटेड एवरी ईयर देवर देवर कंपाइल्ड अक्रॉस सेंचुरीज बाई डिफरेंट सीयर्स कॉल ऋषीज द वैदिक लिटरेचर इंक्लूड्स द फोर संहिताज ऑफ वेदर्स ऋग्वेद साम वेद यजुर्वेद अथर्वेद एंड द ब्राह्मण्स एंड आर एन एक्स अटैच टू दैम एंड द एटीन मेजर उपनिषद इफ नॉट मोर कंटिन्यूइंग ऑल द वे डाउन टू द एपिक्स लाइक रामायण एंड महाभारत एंड इन दिस कंटिन्यूटी देर इज अ नॉलेज अबाउट फूड एंड साइंस अबाउट फूड बट देर इज नो सच थिंग इज वैदिक डाइट अगर आप देखो इफ यू हैव एन ओपन माइंड वेदर्स मैंशन ईटिंग बीफ देर इज द बुक बाई प्रोफेसर डी एन झा द मेथ ऑफ द होली काउ the great heroes ram and krishna krishna was basically a dairy person but ram was shooting vinchan the golden deer and consuming it so the princes ate meat court circle ate meat brahmacharis were not supposed to eat meat sanyasis were not supposed to eat meat but the vedic diet was not a prescribed norm forced on somebody ki to aapne ye khana hai because ved mein ye hai ki ved mein ashwamedh bhi hota tha ved mein सेक्रीफाइसिस भी होते थे एंड द होल मेटाफर ऑफ ईटिंग इन वेद इज कि आप जब खाते हैं तो यू आर पुटिंग अ ऑफरिंग इन टू यूर जठराग्नि इन यूर स्टमक देर इज अ फायर विच इज डाइजेस्टिव फायर एंड यू आर ऑफरिंग ऑफरिंग इट दिस इज द वैदिक विजडम बट देर इज नो सच थिंग एज अ वैदिक डाइट द क्लोजेस्ट यू कम टू दैट इज आई वुड थिंक सेवनटीन चैप्टर इन गीता विच टॉक्स विथ थ्री काइंड थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ पीपल and three types of food and the three types of foods are satvik rajasik tamasik and there are supposed to be three kinds of people satvik rajasik tamasik now they can be translated very crudely and literally but they are supposed to be uh, agile um, energetic slothful uh, pure basic essence but there is not one category of food is not necessarily superior to another if you are a wrestler like take philip phelps सात हजार कैलरी उसकी डाइट थी जब वो सात और छह ओलंपिक गोल्ड मेडल जीत रहा था सिमिलरली इफ देर वॉज अ सोल्जर जिसके बदल में जेरा बख्तर था अमिल स्टॉक ऑफ राना प्रताप मन भर का लोहे का था तो वो सात्विक खाना खा के थोड़ी झेलेंगे उसे सो इफ यू हैड अ नेचर ऑफ जॉब विच वॉज फिजिकली डिमांडिंग यू वुड प्रोबेबली हैव अ टामसिक डाइट इफ यू आर अ वर्किंग क्लास बट इफ यू आर अ ब्राह्मण सेंट्री लाइफ स्टाइल हमारी आपकी तरह कुर्सी तोड़ रहा है तो उसकी डाइट प्रेफरेबली सात्विक होगी अदरवाइज डू नॉट बी गुड फॉर इट इन बिटवीन वुड बी द राजसिक डाइट वुड कम्बाइंड एलिमेंट्स ऑफ सात्विक डाइट एंड एलिमेंट्स ऑफ टामसिक डाइट बट टू आंसर योर क्वेश्चन इन इन अ मोर एग्जॉस्टिव मैनर देर इज एनदर बिट ऑफ विजडम विच कम्स टू ट्रेडिशनल विजडम विच कम्स टू इंडियन फूड दैट इज द आयुर्वेद नाउ आयुर्वेद इज building on information in atharved building on in philosophy of sankhya the mahabhuts and matras and panch mahabhut we don't have time to expand this philosophical discourse but there are five elements earth water air fire and space in this there is core cor- corresponding properties of food kaf pitta vad these properties relate to uh, bile flame uh, nervous energy to certain elements like earth or fire or water or air and human body is the space where this play takes place again if you see kaf pitta vad is the theory in ayurved of tri triguna tridosh dosh not as a defect but as you know properties which have to remain in balance humors so to speak so you have if you very easily use the mathematics i wish tanvi were here because he is mathematically inclined uh, three means permutation combinations would give you six six there will be pure kaf pitta vat there will be kaf pitta pitta vat 
mixed categories. Right. So you will have six categories of people, and you will have similarly six categories of types of food. Types of food. There is one more interesting thing. <clears throat> India is one of the few places in the world where six seasons are celebrated. Shad Ritu. Otherwise, you have uh, spring, summer, uh, fall, winter. Yes. But here we have Varsha Ritu. We have Hemant and Shishir divided into two. So we have six uh, year divided into two cycles of two months each. And Shad Ritu is correspond to uh, what uh, food should be. Right. Now, this is not Vedic food. But this is food which Ayurveda tells you. Ayurveda is not one of the major, major Vedas. Now what happens is, uh, in Ayurveda there is a compendium called Bhava Prakash Nikantu. And then there is something called Madhav Nidhanam. Now they tell you ki aapki dincharya kya honi chahiye, what should be your daily cycle, depending on who you are, and what should be your seasonal cycle of food. So you eat food which is appropriate to the season, appropriate to the place where you are, appropriate to your station in life, appropriate to what you are doing. So this combined knowledge, some people try to say this is Vedic diet. This is not prescribed by the Vedas anywhere. What is, people have got a distilled essence of traditional knowledge system, primarily from Ayurveda, based on Sakya philosophy and the five Bhuts and Mahabhutas, but Desh Kal, and what does the word Swast mean? It means centered in yourself. So this is what the philosophy, Indian philosophy of food is, but it would be to my mind very wrong to call it Vedic philosophy. A very popular hypothesis which I found on these uh, deep subreddit threads about the Indian diet was actually that so far as the elements grown from earth, there are only three which were there in the Indian subcontinent at the time which was Moong, Masur and Chana. And chana, what about rice? It says that rice and wheat only popularized in the continent because there this was... This is news to me because all the botanists say that rice is one of the wild grasses tamed first in India. It was tamed elsewhere also in China and in, in Africa and so on. But uh, it is not as if the lentils belonged only to India. It applies to everything. I mean, if you follow the Gondwana land and the splitting of the continents... Um, I mean, I think that nobody can claim that this is sui generis in India. Maybe for <clears> past 10,000 years, you can say sugarcane is grown more in India elsewhere. Rice more in India than elsewhere. Wheat or it may have originated in Central Asia, but it's, be, it's every, like you said, chana, you know. But in Vedic literature, to go back to Vedic literature, what they mentioned is shark, chanak, marsh, right. and wheat, yes. and, and rice. So how do we pick and say ki ye to hota tha, in Hindustan mein ye nahi hota tha. I mean, all these theories which come uh, from the Wikipedia University, uh, Anshul, I have a problem with. Garbage in, garbage out. Nobody bothers to check up what the source of information is. Nobody wants to cross-check in a peer group reviewed uh, scientific journal. I mean, ethno, I mean, you have a journal of ethnobotany printed in Jaipur, which has readership of 25, and it is it can't be treated as a peer group journal. But if you go, what people have done in agronomy, and they have traced the taming of different crops, and there is archaeological evidence of this. So if 5,000 years ago in Indus Valley civilization, you had a granary where you find wheat and rice and millets and animals butchered for uh, the dining table, why should I quarrel about that? Why should I go back earlier? I'll go back earlier. If you want to go back earlier, you go back to the paintings in wall paintings in uh, the rock cut caves in Bhimbetka near Bhopal. It shows a hunt. It shows that people are despoiling honeycombs. It shows that people are killing, trying to kill rhinoceroses and boar and other things. So people were eating 15 to 20,000 years ago before the birth of Christ. All these things. And I would not be stuck in Hindustan. I mean, if you see the early Indians, the theory is very, very convincing that everybody came from Africa to originally. Right. And same applies to the DNA of plants. So let's not get into this one popular theory. Because you say one popular theory, I will not accept that at all. Okay. I, I, I'll I, go to a line which you mentioned agronomy and it said that wheat has become, wheat is now a very major part of every Indian household. No, I did not say that at all. Wheat is an important part of the Indian household in North India and Punjab. It is not in South. South, the staple is rice. Rice. So it is not every Indian household has a place for wheat at all. No. 
is in rice. In Gujarat and Rajasthan, the basic grain is millets, bajra. Right. It's not there at all. So in northeast wheat is not there at all. So in coast it is not there at all. So our uh, fixation with Punjab and Delhi and Haryana and treating this as the Indian universal is, I think, very fallacious. The popularization of consuming atta, wheat, maida is considered to be a result that we weren't capable of irrigating our lands properly and hence... No, no, but you, but you know, I'm sure that is what I'm objecting to. What is making you generalize this sweeping statement that because we had canal system in Punjab, because we had five rivers there, because we had wheat there, the Kaveri Delta, the Godavari Delta, the Krishna Delta, the Tungabhadra Delta in South were natural born irrigation systems, fertile land where rice was growing. No wheat, period. So what are we talking about? So introduction of wheat into the diet and... Introduction of wheat into diet of whom? Do South Indians eat rotis even now? The North Indians are at uh, least. So North Indians are not the Indians only. I mean, on this one, I feel very strongly that Indians include the Tamilians, the Kanadigas, the Andhras, the Tulus, the Tulus, the Malayalis, the Gurjar Gujaratis, uh, the Odias, the Kalingas, and the Seven Sisters, which are not alike, the Manipuris, the Nagas, the Mizos, the Arunachalis, the Sikkimis, the Ahamiyas, the Ahoms. Where are they eating wheat? wheat? I mean, it has become... A novelty item in restaurants and cities and kasbahs ki tandoori roti bhi khalo, paratha bhi khalo, tandoori chicken bhi khalo, tikka bhi khalo. But this is not what the people eat. This is not what the people, majority of people eat. So I would not generalize that wheat has become popular. I mean, there was a time when rice was sent, exported in 65-66 to cope with the food short, rice shortages in South India. And there was resentment ki aap... If one could have it, people would eat aspirational basmati. Right. But you have to afford it. wheat and maida. Maida ham kyu khayenge? Agar ab humko agar doctor kehta hai ki roti khao. To why should I eat refined maida at all? The whole logic is ki refined khana kharaab hai. Refined salt, refined sugar, refined maida. To mein kyu khao ga? Magar mein khata hu na. अब बिहार में अगर आप जाइएगा तो आपको जो सत्तू मिलेगा वो गेहूं का सत्तू थोड़ी है जो उसका सत्तू है उसका जो स्टेपल है वो जौ का है और वो चने का है अगर आप डेकन में जा रहे हैं तो वहां जो सत्तू है वो ज्वार की रोटी है तो वेयर इज द व्हीट आई मीन दिस व्हीट जोक इज समथिंग व्हिच टेक्स माय ब्रेथ अवे नो ओके नाउ आई गेट द आईडिया दैट आई कैन नॉट generalize a statement no you cannot generalize is not the point you should not generalize in a sweeping manner about a particular crop across the all india thing my problem stems from the fact that i don't consider that wheat is something that should be consumed as a staple because of it not providing nutritional values which again... No, I don't think that you are being scientifically very accurate. If you talk to a nutritionist, a wheat combined with a lentil, having the lysine content going in is a nourishing enough is thing. A, is if it's a bulgar wheat, then uh, bulgar wheat is very fashionable, it's very nourishing. So, durham wheat is very healthy. Hai. But this is all refined wheat? No, it's not, durham wheat is not refined wheat. So, when you said that... What are you saying? That you are against refined wheat. But traditional Indian diet was not refined wheat. Now, we used to eat roti in the house. We used to eat roti in the house. We used to eat roti in the house. In Delhi, we used to eat roti in the house. We used to eat roti in the house. We used to eat roti in the house. Right. Very clearly, uh, I need to understand that it's... You must give up your obsession with wheat. <laughs> I clearly should uh, dissect it clearly that Haan. what is... Re- what, I'm against something that's refined and not... You are against something which is refined? Agreed. No dispute with that. But if that is to be proved only with the wheat, why not polished rice? Yes. That as well. I mean, anything, that is, anything that's uh, refined. The Prime, Prime Minister Modi is popularizing millets. Very good. But do you need to popularize millets in a poor country where Maluwa, Ragi, Bajra, Jaw, Jawar, people are eating, are eating, वो तो आज छोड़ रहे हैं जब उनके पास थोड़ा पैसा आ रहा है कि यार चलो गेहूं खा लेते हैं थोड़ा चावल खा लेते हैं एंड अल्टीमेटली दे हैव टू अगेन 
switch back to organic ragi and organic they oats. don't have to they will not regardless of the government's promotion this year will come and pass and people will eat what they want to eat you can't declare a year of certain thing and force people to eat see look to answer your question about nutrition all science says ki agar ladke ko bachche ko ladki ko anda milega to uska protein intake bada acha hoga weight by weight madhya pradesh sarkar nahi chahti ki bachche anda khaye for hmm. the revivalist religious orthodoxy reasons hmm. so you knock that off the menu to pehle nahi samjhte khichdi khilayenge unko i mean that is the kind of thing which is stupid beyond all measure so you know if you say that all proteins have to be vegetable proteins not even eggs milk can only partially do that so things become wrong there uh, otherwise is nothing wrong with saying ki uh, aap unrefined bhi bilkul nahi kar sakte na kachi ghani ka aapko tel istemal karne ko hi nahi milega milega to adulteration ka problem usme hone lagega hmm. all this stems from the idea that we were once a very great country and all the invasions it is it starts from the illusion that we are once a very great country i don't wish to sound unpatriotic like rahul gandhi in london but i'm talking in india i think we have been a very great country but our greatness has seen ups and downs we have lost to invaders our food production has suffered our people have lived in poverty which we must admit that a small elite which lived in great affluence was very properly nourished and the majority of the people either lived off the crumbs of the table or lived very poorly so take take the population i mean let's take the figures the population of india has about 15 to 17% of tribal population yes they were not eating either wheat or rice till very recently yes we have um, 10 to 12% of uh, muslims who were certainly not all vegetarians they were eating meat including buff buff and uh, beef in certain cases they avoided pork but the tribals ate pork as well so that takes 17% plus 12% then you have the so called scheduled castes who had no food taboos so you would have another 15% coming here you have 2% christians and parsis so when you add them up you would see that we can't generalize about what the people of india ate and say ki unka khana nourishing tha ki nahi tha jo brahman tha kashmir mein wo daba ke gosht kha raha tha hmm. but brahman was the brahman caste was also converted into islam right. wo khate rahe peete rahe so you cannot generalize in indian food is depending on region local produce depending on caste depending on social class depending on gender depending on the degree of orthodoxy which was practiced so that is what i think we should keep in mind when we talk in terms of what is good nutritional value for kashmir may not be great nutritional value for gujarat i think it's very important to always account that a principle cannot be uh, applied yes, across yes any in a country as large as india of a subcontinental proportions i mean i'm not denigrating the greatness of the country but each i mean there is a famous book uh, gibbons rise and fall of the roman empire yes the india has also risen and fallen in different regions several times great empires like shatwahanas then cholas then pandyas then cheris then rashtrakutas then vakatakas then kakatiyas then hoysals then chandels then gangas in odisha you have uh, rise and fall of empires within india so you cannot possibly say that hum bilkul pinnacle of greatness mein hamesha the aur hamara khana sabse badhiya tha aur aaj bhi hamare paas sab kuch hai no no way so, wo jo statement aate hai ki aaj bhi hamare paas sab kuch hai that is something that i aaj bhi hamare paas sab kuch jo hai again that is something which you wanted to discuss and i was reluctant to because you said facts and figures about what india exports now what india exports india exports uh, 1.5 billion us dollars worth of fruits every year not too great a figure if you have the international trade in market isse zyada to log drugs ki taskari kar lete hain ab isko agar aap dekho to aap kya kar rahe hain can you split it into kahan ko hum export kar rahe hain humse zyada export to america khud kar raha hai australia fall kar raha hai aap aaj agar bazaar mein khareedne jaye to fruit shelves are groaning under the weight of australian fruit thai fruit american fruit canadian fruit since globalization where is the indian fruit आप खाने को तरस जाएंगे आपको मौसम में अच्छा दशहरी नहीं मिलेगा लंगड़ा नहीं मिलेगा हापुस तो और भी रेयर है अल्फांसो सो यू हैव ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ बेरीज इंपॉर्टेड यू हैव ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ फ्रूट पेयर्स एंड प्लम्स एंड एप्रिकॉट्स 
but where is the Indian export? Because there is a, as legal regimes go, the European Union imposes a very strict non-trade, non-trade tariff barrier on India. Of phytosanitary conditions ki aapke uh, masalo mein to me mangni nikalai chuhe ki aapke phal ki skin mein koi fungus aa gaya tha so they keep our product out of their markets and their their produce is imported so that logic again ki india is the largest producer of fruits and vegetables india is what, what is india's agricultural exports like we are exporting uh, i think 18% of our agricultural exports if memory serves me right is rice 9% is sugar, eight percent is spices, and five percent then comes to fruit, fruit. which is one point five. So I mean, this is crazy. <clears throat> you think as Uber Indians, we have ignored the Indian exo- Indian exotica? No, it, not only Indian exotica. You started with a very very substantial point, Anshul. When you say that FCI has food rotting in its silos, it doesn't mean that India is uh, overflowing for with food grains. It only means that it is, when it grows, it has not been distributed properly to the people who need it. And then it will be released at times to uh, meet with the requirements of the farmer situation or drought-like condition in a particular area or free pre-electoral gifts of food to potential voters. Yes. So the, the use of food, stored food grain as a political weapon is not the same thing as having self-sufficiency in food grains. Now, the great achievement was the Green Revolution in 60s, when India became a country self-sufficient in food grains. But the father of the Indian Green Revolution, Dr. Swami Nathan, was the first one to admit that it was a great mistake to have the Green Revolution strategy because it poisoned the earth, the cancer train in Punjab, the water level going down. It, it benefited only the rich farmers who could afford the inputs and uh, tractors and combines and had large land holdings. This was confined to Tarai and Punjab and Haryana only. It didn't affect the whole the whole country. So the farmers uh, shifting from food grains to cash crops like uh, cotton and sugarcane and tobacco. And then the problems there, the genetically modified crops and boring well and the largest farmer societies took place in Maharashtra and East West Godavari districts and Prakasham and Andhra Pradesh, which are fertile regions. So let's not forget that the facts are very misleading. You had another interesting question which you sent to me that the state-wise quota, both of nutrition and of their share of their produce, I think is very misleading. That the chief statistical advisor to the government of India has come out with the statement after his retirement, of course, that the government statistics are not to be taken very seriously. Okay. They are not very credible. They are doctored according to political compulsions. Uh, it is quite so. I mean, statistics in any case are not very credible most of the time. They can be manipulated. But data about agricultural sector is highly suspect. There are two reasons. We haven't had a census for the past 12 years. So all data which is extrapolating nutrition, etc. on all India population <coughs> doesn't make sense to me. Too much democratic profile has changed. People have moved from villages to cities. Uh, people have moved up in life. People have come, come down in life and especially the corona trauma, the migrant labor is totally different. But besides this, what people can afford to eat now has changed their eating styles. You say, I don't know if I can eat it or not. Today, we eat The boys were working in call centers. Uh, they were staying in servant quarters in JNU and other places. Suddenly, they had disposable incomes and they would drink beer and eat pizzas and say, peer group pressure. Tha. आप गुड़गांव में आ रहे हैं आप पिज्जा खाएंगे हैमबर्गर खाएंगे कंपनी का लंच लेंगे जलसा में जाके अड्डे में जाके थोड़ी बियर पिएंगे बट दिस वाज नॉट दैट दे कुड अफोर्ड टू डू इट ऑन न्यूट्रिशन फ्रंट आई मीन पिज्जा इज नॉट अ ग्रेट न्यूट्रिशन डाइट एब्सोल्युटली नॉर इज बियर अनलेस यू आर वेरी थिन एंड स्किन देन यू वुड बी ड्रिंकिंग स्टाउट बट द प्रॉब्लम इज कि ये जो खाने का पैटर्न चेंज हुआ है ना इज अनफॉर्चूनेटली नॉट सर्टेनली न्यूट्रिशनल it is aspirational foods are not nutritional. And you'd say, why not? Why should I eat my tribal food? Why should I eat my unrefined food? Why should I not eat fast food? I had an interesting conversation with my granddaughter. I stopped, tried to stop her from eating junk food. And she said, this must be junk food for you. It is not junk food for me. My energy requirements are more. I can eat this junk food. You can't. <laughs> so that is, the, that is the, what the aspirational food and the taste of the youth is not necessarily nutritional. It is only when you become settled, when you come into your early 30s, you again start worrying about gym and healthy food and vegan food and lifestyle changes. 
to go back to the statistics and figures, take a state. How do you distinguish the population ka concentration? Let's take a backward state like uh, Jharkhand. Rajji mein kitne log rehte hain? Hazaribagh mein kitne rehte hain? Dumka mein kitne rehte hain? Gumla mein kitne rehte hain? Latur mein kitne log rehte hain? Dalton Ganj mein kitne rehte hain? Latterhart mein kitne log rehte hain? Santhal Pargana mein kitne log rehte hain? Jamshedpur mein kitne log rehte hain? Just take the main district headquarters. And if you plot the populations there, the nutrition figures which you get are highly misleading because you have your statistical surveys done in these areas or very small sample sizes in tribal areas. Not very reliable. And you are extrapolating it that here is very low. And then again the politics of it that any BJP ruled state can't be bad. Any non-BJP ruled state can't be good. So the worst state of Bihar will be Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan will be Bihar, Rajasthan will be Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan will be Bihar, कर्नाटक हो सकती है अब अब पहले हो सकती है तमिलनाडु हो सकती है ओडिशा तो मतलब इट्स डिफिकल्ट टू से बट यू नो वन ऑफ द पोरर स्टेट्स सो आई हैव अ फनी फीलिंग दैट दीज स्टैटिस्टिक्स अबाउट न्यूट्रिशन अबाउट माल न्यूट्रिशन वर्क ऑन अ सैंपल साइज एंड टारगेटेड स्पेसिफिकली एट सर्टेन स्टेट्स और सर्टेन स्कीम्स आई डोंट डोंट टेक इट वेरी सीरियसली एंड दैट वुड बी ट्रू ऑफ एवरीथिंग यू टेक उत्तराखंड कि उत्तराखंड में डी मेजॉरिटी ऑफ पापुलेशन नाउ इज इन तराई एरियाज डी नॉन माउंटेनस एरियाज वेयर व्हिच इज लॉट्स ऑफ वीट इज ग्रोन एंड लॉट्स ऑफ शुगर केन इज ग्रोन एंड गुड राइस इवन तिलक चंदन हैज बीन रिवाइव्ड बट व्हाट अबाउट डी रेस्ट ऑफ डी उत्तराखंड व्हाट अबाउट डी अपर रीचेस व्हाट डू वी नो अबाउट डी Take for instance the migrant labor. आप गुड़गांव में कहीं बैठिए, आपके कान में सिर्फ भोजपुरी सुनाई देती है, या आपको मैथिली सुनाई देगी। Where is the Haryani? We left Margali girl was there at all. No, not anymore. You go to 23A market, you will have momos, you will have lithi choka. एक वो बिचारी गोना की जलेबे की दुकान भी है, but what I'm trying to argue is that the migration of daily immigrant labor has changed the profile and eating habits of Indians. What would, according to you, be the food culture utopia in... that's a good question i think it will find its own level i think it will find its own level ultimately logon ko lagega ki pizza kha ke fashion statement to ho jata hai magar pet nahi bharta hai romantically you can share a pizza with a girlfriend or a boyfriend and enjoy yourself magar ghar ja ke aapko phir roti dal khane ki zarurat padti hai pet bharta nahi pura hmm. i mean very few of us even anglicized people can eat a pizza and be happy with it और ईट हैम्बर्गर एंड बी हैप्पी विद इट कि वो तो आलू टिक्की हैम्बर्गर ही होगा ना बेचारे मैगडी वाला जो है वो आजकल दोसा मैगबर्गर भी बेच रहा है ना गोमिनो वाला नवरात्रि में नवरात्रि पिज्जा भी बेचता है ना कोटू के आटे का तो हिंदुस्तान में हर इंपोर्टेड फॉरेन चीन की औकात सामने आ गई है कि तंदूरी चिकन के मुकाबले के फेल हो गया वो भी अब राइस के संग और शोरबे के संग चिकन देने लग गया है ना सो आई हैव अ फीलिंग दैट ओवर अ सर्टन पीरियड ऑफ टाइम पीपल इन यंग पीपल इन इंडिया विल ईट वॉट दे वॉन्ट टू ईट इफ दे कैन अफोर्ड टू ईट वॉट दे डू They will meet their level. Sir, आज आज अगर आप देखो तो पैन इंडियन खाना हो रहा है ना आप लद्दाख में चले जाओ आपको डोसा मिल जाता है आप तमिलनाडु में चले जाओ आपको तंदूरी चिकन मिल जाता है मैं आसाम में शिवसागर में था रेस्टोरेंट में जिस होटल में मैं रह रहा था वहाँ बारह डिशेस मेन्यू में थी जिनमें नौ पनीर की थी तो मैंने उससे पूछा भैया तुम्हारे यहाँ अपना खाना कुछ नहीं है उसने कहा हमारे यहाँ भी लोग ये खाना पसंद करते हैं बाहर से जो आप जैसे आते हैं वो भी ये खाना पसंद करते हैं so what do you do? so I think a pan Indian food is evolving. जिसमें डोसा है, जिसमें इडली है, जिसमें पनीर की कढ़ाई पनीर कह लीजिए, मक्खाई पनीर कह लीजिए, टिकली है, काली दाल है, जिसमें तंदूरी रोटियाँ और पराठे हैं, टिक्के हैं। ये this is becoming a norm. आप शादी में कहीं चले जाइए, तो एक ही खाना होता है ना? काली दाल होती है, मिक्स सलाद होता है, कुछ टिक्के होते हैं, कुछ वेजिटेरियन स्टार्टर होते हैं, कुछ फेक चाइनीज आ जाता है, स्प्रिंग रोल्स वगैरह। This is what is happening. So there is a lot of cultural influence which meeting. There is a lot of confluence which is playing with at least the local heritage, local food heritage. Yes. And on top of that, we have GMO seeds which automatically affect. Uh, variety, do, do. Uh, a local... Uh, no, but to go, to go back to what your main query is, laws. So, how many people have to study labels? 
आप जब लेबल पढ़ते तो इतने छोटे छोटे अक्षर में मेरी तो आँख फूट गई है एक में तो मोतिया बिंद है इतना बड़ा मैग्नीफाइंग लेंस लगा के भी आपको कोई बताता नहीं कि उसका रंग कौन सा गया है ई वन वन क्या था आर्टिफिशियल प्रिजर्वेटिव क्या गया है वो लाल रंग जो है वो कोचिनी कीड़े से बना हुआ तो नहीं है हम तो खा रहे हैं व्रत के दिन भी कैसा बड़ा अच्छा शरबत मगर उसमें कोचिनील की लाली पड़ी हुई है ब्रिलियंट रेड जो है या ब्रिलियंट ब्लू किससे बना है माई प्रॉब्लम इज दैट सर्टन लॉज स्टिपुलेट कि आपके लेबलिंग ऐसी होनी चाहिए सर्टन लॉज सीज कि आपके खाने में बिल्कुल क्लियर होना चाहिए एडल्ट्रेशन का पता होना चाहिए मगर कितने लोगों को लेबल पढ़ने का भी तमीज़ है और कितने लोग लेबल ब्रिचेस को भी वो करते हैं आप जिंदगी भर ये समझिए कि आप फ्रूट जूस पी रहे हैं जब आप फ्रूटी पी रहे हैं लेबल पढ़िए तो उसमें दो सौ एम एल में बाईस ग्राम चीनी आप एक बार में पेल रहे हैं पेट में बाईस ग्राम चीनी का मतलब है कि आप ऑलमोस्ट पाँच पच्चा पच्चीस पाँच छोटे चीनी के चम्मच आपने एक घोट में और वो फ्रूट जूस भी नहीं है उसमें फ्रूट जूस का पल बहुत कम है बाकी फ्रूट से आर्टिफिशियल कलर है सो आई आई थिंक द लॉज अबाउट लेबलिंग लॉज अबाउट मार्केटिंग ऑयल्स एंड फूड ग्रेन्स शुड बी स्ट्रिक्टर एंड एज अ लॉयर यू नो मच बेटर देन मोस्ट पीपल दैट हाउ मेनी कन्विक्शन टेक प्लेस इन फूड एडल्ट्रेशन इज मैंडेटरी कन्विक्शन मगर वो टेक्निकल ग्राउंड में हमेशा छूट जाता है सो दैट इज़ अ काइंड ऑफ थिंग विच यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड दैट इज़ अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वे दैट यू पुट एड बिकॉज आई वॉज गोइंग ऑन द लाइन्स दैट वॉट शुड द गवर्नमेंट रेगुलेशन बी टू गवर्नमेंट में रेगुलेट अ परफेक्ट सेट ऑफ लॉज द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इज द प्रॉब्लम एज लॉन्ग एज द फूड इंस्पेक्टर नोज कि मैंने आपके यहाँ में आया और आपने मिलावट कर रखी थी दही में या दूध में मैं अनदेखी करके चला गया अपना हफ्ता लेके चला गया दिखाने को मैंने एक आध आदमी को पकड़ना भी है वो ट्रैफिक पुलिस वाला खेल है ना कि अगर पकड़ूंगा ही नहीं तो मेरी नौकरी खतरे में आ जाएगी तो उस बात में कोई ऐसा लूपोल छोड़ दूंगा कि आप टेक्निकल एक्टर हो सकता है been in cases where the clients have been able to get a sample change after it has been sent for oh, of course yes the sample jab gather kiya tha wo tab technically theek nahi tha pachnama nahi bana tha galat pakla tha kharab ho gaya hai ab usko test nahi kar pate hain test reports nahi theek hoti it is happened in forensics also right uh, in ballistics also but i think that is something which the government should be more worried about it will only come with when people become more and more aware about their legal rights ki kya main kha raha hu क्या मुझे खाने को चाहिए आप दूध ला रहे हैं दूध आप पी रहे हैं मतलब आपको वो अमूल का था मतलब डेयरी का था कंट्री डिलाइट का था मुँह का था किसी का था hmm. आप ये नहीं देखते हैं कि वो पास्चराइज दूध कितना परसेंट फैट वाला है टोंड है तो कितना परसेंट है डबल hmm. टोंड है तो कितना परसेंट है बफेले हो तो कितना ज़्यादा है तो दीज थिंग्स ओनली विल कम विद एफ्लुएंस लिटरेसी अवेयरनेस इट है आई एम नॉट अस्ट एंड लिटिल बिट ऑफ सनिकल पीपल हु आर डिवोटेड टू दस यस मोर देन लिटिल बिट ऑफ सनिकल पीपल लॉट्स मोर पीपल शुड से कि आपको ये खाना चाहिए मगर आप मार मार के मुझे ज़बरदस्ती तो नहीं खिला सकते ना राइट right. अगर मेरा समोसा खाने का मन आ रहा है तो आप मुझसे कहिए अरे साहब आप आज मैं आपको बाजरे की रोटी खिलाऊंगा बड़ा मज़ा आएगा उसमें ये जो की रोटी खिलाऊंगा मैंने खाना तो समोसा है ना साहब अब आप कहिए मैंने आपकी पापड़ी चाट बना दी है रागी से मैं क्यों खाऊँगा अगर मैंने पापड़ी चाट ही खानी है तो मैं रागी महीने में एक बार खाऊँगा मगर ठीक ठाक पापड़ी चाट खाऊँगा और रागी वाली क्यों खाऊँगा आजकल जहाँ मैं जा रहा हूँ हैविंग ब्रेकफास्ट फॉर अ मीटिंग सब बड़ा हेल्दी डोसा है रागी डोसा है hmm. उसके भीतर जो ससुरा पाव भर आलू का मसाला भरा है वो कौन सा है इम्पॉसिबल डज मेक सेंस टू अ लॉट ऑफ वुड यू अग्री दैट अ लॉट ऑफ अफ्लुएंस दैट दिस वेस्टर्नाइज फूड पास्ता पिज्जा बर्गर्स हैव इज बिकॉज ऑफ द पैकेजिंग दे कम इन एंड इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन पैकेजिंग इन द बिग सिटीज मगर तुम छोटे कस्बों में चले जाओ तो वहाँ तो पास्ता खोमचे में मिलता है ना वहाँ तो हेम्बर्गर भी खोमचे में मिलता है कांच के बक्से में वहाँ जो चाउमीन है वो तो कढ़ाई में आपके सामने बना रहा है आदमी बट इट्स द ट्रिकल डाउन इफेक्ट इट इज द एस्पिरेशनल ट्रिकल डाउन इफेक्ट कि मैंने भी हेम्बर्गर खाना है मैंने भी पिज्जा खाना है मैंने भी चाउमीन खाना है मैंने भी पास्ता खाना है यस आई वुड एग्री विद पार्ट ऑफ इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ एडवर्टाइजिंग पार्ट ऑफ इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ पैकेजिंग एंड वेन यू एंड अप एक्सपीरियंसिंग द इंडियन क्वीन इन सच अ वे दैट you are able to have a highly curated indian experience where somebody is cooking or somebody is giving you that kind of exclusive experience your vision towards exploring food changes to a great degree it does but very few people are doing it agar aap purani delhi mein jaiye 
तो कितने लोग हैं जो आप ऊपर फैला के ऊंची रुमाली रोटी उछाल के आपकी आंखें सामने बनाते हैं रोटी तो नान भाई के यहाँ से बन के आती है ना आपने खमीरी रोटी शीरमाल ताफ्तान बकर खानी रोगनी बनती कहाँ देखी है वो करीब में आप खाइए जवाहर में खाइए बन के ही आई हुई ना कहीं से देख में पहले से कौरमा रखा हुआ है निहारी रखी हुई है पाए रखे हुए हैं बिरयानी तैयार रखी हुई है वो आपके सामने बना कौन रहा है मुझे आप ये बताइए किस आदमी में इतना पेशेंस होगा कि वो तीन घंटे बैठ के बिरयानी बनता देखा उसके बाद कहिए मुझे इसके बाद बड़ा मज़ा आया बिरयानी खाने में मेरा तो मज़ा ख़त्म हो जाएगा मुझे खाने वक्त बुला लीजिए आप जब बिरयानी तैयार हो जाए सो ओनली द प्रिवलेज एंड द तो आई वुड नॉट से प्रिवलेज द वन गुड थिंग विच हैज़ हैपन विद ग्लोबलाइजेशन इज कि यंगस्टर्स हैव एड मनी टू स्पेंड जो घर में नहीं खा सकते थे वो बाहर दुकान पर जाके तो बिरयानी खा सकते हैं ना चलिए मैं हैदराबादी दम की बिरयानी नहीं खा सकता हूँ मगर ये जो ससुरी आई है मुरादाबादी बिरयानी तो हर सड़क के कोने में मिल रही है और आग के सामने चिकन उसमें नजर आ रहा है तो मेरे मम्मी वह भी नहीं कि मुझे भैंस खिला रहा मुझे इतराज नहीं भैंस खाने से आमतौर पर लोगों को होता है तो चिकन आपको ऊपर नजर आ रहा है मुरादाबादी बिरयानी सड़क किनारे एल्यूमिनियम के पतीले में बनी हुई आप खा लेंगे तीन चार बार खाने के बाद आपको तमीज आ जाएगा कि अच्छी बिरयानी और बुरी बिरयानी में क्या फर्क फर्क होता है तो देन यू विल गेट टू इट स्लाइटली बेटर केस ऑफ कोर्स एंड वुड यू से दैट द सेम वे यू लुक एट द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ वेस्टर्न फूड और फूड फ्रॉम एनी वेयर इन द वर्ल्ड ऑन इंडिया द सेम विल ऑल्सो बी लुकड एट अदर कंट्रीज टूवर्ड्स इंडियन फूड दैट करीज आर टेकिंग ओवर द वर्ल्ड एंड करीज आर टेकन ओवर द वर्ल्ड लॉन्ग टाइम बैक द पहला करी रेस्टोर वॉज वेल्यू स्वामी विच वॉज ओपन इन लंडन आई थिंक इन दाइनटीन ट्वेंटीज तो सौ साल तो हो ही गए ना यार तो देखो दिक्कत ऐसी नहीं है कि हमारा खाना 500 साल से तो विदेशी खाना हमारा खाना ही है ना यार पुर्तगाली करीब करीब पौने पाँच सौ साल पहले हिंदुस्तान में आए 400 साल उन्होंने गोवा में राज किया तो गोवा का खाना विंडालू हो सोरपटेल हो ब्लड सॉसेजेस हो बिबिका केक हो पोर्ट वाइन के साथ वो सारा पुर्तगाली खाना तो है ना राइट right. वो हिंदुस्तानी खाना थोड़ी था अगल बगल में भी वो खाना वही था अब महाराजा रंजीत सिंह ने क्राउनिंग उनकी हुई थी सेवनटीन में उनकी आर्मीज गई थी काबुल तक और गई थी लद्दाख तक तो वो जो खाना अफगानिस्तान से आया जो खाना कश्मीर से आया वो भी तो बाहर से ही आया खाना 2000 साल पहले जो खाना आया साउथ ईस्ट एशिया से वो भी तो बाहर से ही आया खाना था ना जो फर्मेंटेड फूड्स थे इडली डोसा वगैरह तो आई वुड से दैट खाना हैज़ ऑलवेज बीन इन्फ्लुएंस बाई एंड विल हैपन इंडियन फूड विल गो देयर बट इंडियन फूड विल नेवर बी दू माई माइंड मच टू माई रिग्रेट बी द मेन स्ट्रीम ग्लोबल फूड क्योंकि लोग अपना गोश्त खाना नहीं छोड़ेंगे लोग अपना बीफ खाना नहीं छोड़ेंगे लोग अपने मसल्स खाना नहीं छोड़ेंगे लोग अपने सी फूड खाना नहीं छोड़ेंगे वो लॉबस्टर थर्मिडोर खाना नहीं छोड़ेंगे उनकी सिविलाइजेशन में खाने का ताम जाम है ना मैं क्यों आपकी थाली खाऊं मैं तो वन डिश मील खाता हूं उसमें सब कुछ आता है और दैट एक्सपीरियंस कैन नॉट बी टेकन अवे देखिए किसमें एक वो फिल्म में होता है ना देवदास का ओल्ड वर्जन था जिसमें वो कहता है कंपक्स तू क्या जाने पीने का मजा तूने तो कभी पी नहीं है तो अगर आपने कभी अच्छा स्टेक खाया ही नहीं है रॉ मीडियम तो आपकी अगर आपने कच्ची मछली नहीं खाई है शाशमी तो आप हिंदुस्तानी मछली इतनी पकी हुई है अमृतसरी पकौड़ा बनी हुई क्यों खाएंगे यार जापान में अब बताइए मुझे मुझसे तो नहीं खाई जाएगी मुझसे अमृतसरी मछली तो नहीं खाई जाती मैं पकौड़े खा सकता हूँ जितने खिला दूँ और बाकी मछली में कच्ची पक्की सब खा सकता हूँ बट आई हैव अ फनी फीलिंग दैट इंडियन फूड इज catering to specific regional tastes it will be very popular in indian diaspora abroad but it will never displace the classic american tex mex it will never displace haute cuisine in france it will never replace the mediterranean in italy it will never replace of course the chinese and that also respects the fact that every place has its own set of oh, food oh, culture absolutely absolutely because a lot of conspiracy theories and everything come around how food is used as one of the prime ways to of attack the culture of a place like us tried it with uh, no everything everything attacks uh, coca cola imperialism kehlata tha mcdonaldization of the world kaha jata tha magar main aap se woh to karta kahan hua woh success in india mein hmm aapko alu tikki burger banana pada na hmm aapko dosa burger banana pada na aapko navratra pizza banana pada na but sir the places it worked let's say for ajinomoto नहीं नहीं अजीनो मोतो वॉज नॉट अमेरिकन वो वो तो चाइनीज चाइनीज था एंड द प्रोपोगेंडा अगेंस्ट अजीनो मोटो इट इज नॉट सक्सेड ना मतलब अमेरिकन बिग बिजनेस ट्राइड टू कट इट डाउन बट इट इज नॉट सक्सेडेड नो नो वे आई डोंट आई डो देर आर अदर वेज ऑफ कल्चरल इंपेरिज्म लाइक हॉलीवुड मूवीज लाइक पॉपुलर मैगजीन्स लाइक कॉमिक्स लाइक म्यूजिक 
everything a rich man will try to impose uh, hegemony over the powerless food is one element of it yes and it plays one of the direct uh, involvement roles and and this is something that even despite my very limited experience of 30 years having lived from a very nice house where i get parathas in the morning to a pg where i get the most uh, abrupt uh, abruptly cooked food from the most non caring chef that could ever be to again a court system where eating a healthy meal in a court to now finally again having my own meals curated but actual wo tum apna kisi ko kisa karna wo sare ke sang hota hai if you can afford it hmm. you will create your own meals yes aap buri se buri jagah mein apne liye khana bana loge hmm aapko khana mil jayega that personalization is i think coming Absolutely. back it's it is coming back for everybody who has been fed up of eating maggi again Who's and again been fed up of eating maggi all important thing it is has the resources to buy what he wants buy what he wants to eat yes and that has only come after like afford being able to afford that and it goes without saying yes agar aapke paas paise nahi hai hmm to bhooke to bhajan bhi nahi hote na bhooke bhajan na hoye gopala to there's a old saying to you you should have resources to eat what you want to eat and change your meals and let the uh, experimentation uh, i really i'm thankful that you were able to provide me with a lot of things outside my ambit my purview of how the food law should be looked at now, but the point is you know um, i told that was what my problem is is not only the food laws aap ipc dekh lo na sekno ki tadad mein ab aap kanunon ko alag kar rahe hain so the same thing applies to food laws lots of food laws were enacted in a different situation when the shortages were there droughts were there famines were there nutrition was rampant अब अगर आप पैकेज फूड खरीद रहे हो एग मार्क लगा हुआ है एस आई मार्क लगा हुआ है तो आपको प्रॉब्लम नहीं होता यू कैन नॉट ट्रस्ट बाय सर्टेन थिंग्स ऑफ कोर्स दैट कैन बी हेरा फेरी देयर आल्सो लार्ज स्केल बट द पॉइंट इज टाइम्स हैव चेंज्ड विद प्लेयर्स लाइक मोंसेंटो एंड प्लेयर्स लाइक पाले लेस हु हैव अ वेरी डिफरेंट स्टाइल ऑफ अफेक्टिंग द एग्रो नो बट आल्सो दे हैव हैड टू मेक कॉम्प्रोमाइजेस इन द इंडियन कॉन्टेक्स्ट लाइक पेप्सी sourced its chips for potatoes from a special jam plasm in ladakh done in a special factory somewhere else <coughs> and high technology was used to deliver nano molecules of flavor to register indian taste on your palate hmm so it is and mckain the largest producer of frozen food. potato patties had to go into italy at one stage so the pepsi came and did the bhujia in bikaner bombed badly हल्दीराम डिड एंड बीकानेर वाला डिड मच बेटर देन लहर सो हिंदुस्तान में इन सब की पिटाई हो चुकी है यू सी द मार्केट इज मच टू लार्ज एंड मार्केट इज मच टू डाइवर्स जो फ्लेवर जो गुजरात में चलेगा वो बंगाल में नहीं चलेगा नहीं चलेगा जो तमिलनाडु में चलेगा वो पंजाब में नहीं चलेगा एंड दे आर नॉट यूज टू दैट दे आर यूज टू दोजनाइज अमेरिकन फ्लेवर दैट इज माई ग्रेटेस्ट होम नाउ लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ पर्सनल क्वेश्चन दैट वी गॉट फ्रॉम our followers on instagram we put it out last night that we are having you was that pushpesh sponsor keeps talking about food left right and center but we still haven't been able to find an article where he talks about his favorite food the meal no, no, no. he there, falls back to no 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 there, there are several articles we have written their searches have been confined to google and things which is useless hmm. i do a regular column for i have done it for past 20 years for tribune without a stop I have repeatedly talked about what my favorite food is. I said my favorite food is either a well-made khichdi, not the sick man's khichdi, but a well-made khichdi, which is it includes some fish and meat and the kajri kind of thing. Uh, my favorite foods are a well-made dal, a well-made yellow dal with a proper tadka, a roti cooked on lakdi. I have given several times examples of what my favorite sabzis are. There are green leafy vegetables like haak from Kashmir. or uh, spinach from uttarakhand uh, or fiddlehead ferns i am very clear about what i like i like a well made shami i don't like chicken especially broiler chicken at all uh, i like various things i like various sweets uh, i like kheers made well uh, a lot of indian local uh... oh i i only eat indian i i think i don't suffer from the infinity complex that to prove that i have arrived i must eat foreign food i have traveled enough uh, globally 
I've been treated very well at different places, but I would much rather eat what what my taste in my DNA is. However, the taste of authentic food from elsewhere also. There is no such thing as authentic food, Anshul. तुम्हारे घर में जो अच्छा पराठा बनता है उसका टेस्ट तुम्हारे लिए ऑथेंटिक है मेरे पहाड़ी घर में जो पराठा बनता था वो वो टेस्ट मेरे लिए ऑथेंटिक है हमारे घर में उसमें सफेद मक्खन नहीं डालते थे उसमें मलाई नहीं डालते थे उसके संग लस्सी नहीं पीते थे उसको अंडा दूध भरते नहीं थे मगर हमारे यहाँ वर्की पराठा बनता था जो परतदार बनता था हमको वो सबसे अच्छा तिलों का अजवाइन वाला लगता था तो वॉट इज़ ऑथेंटिक इन योर हाउस इज नॉट नेसरली ऑथेंटिक इन माई हाउस हम कहते हैं पंजाबी खाना तो पंजाबी खाना कौन सा है लाहौर का है पिशावर का है मुल्तान का है पिंडी का है बॉर्डरिंग सिंध है अमृतसर का महाशिया का है अनडिवाइडेड पंजाब में कौन से खाने की आप बात कर रहे हैं पंजाबी खाने की जो, मैं... जो असली पंजाबी खाना होता है वो तो खाने को कहीं रेस्टोरेंट में मिलता नहीं आलू बढ़िया भरते ग्रेवीज दीज आर नॉन कमर्शली नॉन कमर्शली वन माँ चोली दी दाल वाली दाल कहाँ बनती है सो आई आई थिंक यू नो इज द काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स विच आई वुड लाइक टू ईट and that is definitely the kind of food that also I, I nourishes the uh, soul as well in fact for the past 5 years i my soul body mind and soul i have been just out there and every place i go to i just say ki give me something that is not on the menu and like is look me if you are lucky enough to get something which is not on the menu you are a very fortunate person actively looking out for it ah, from because the chef is normally happy to do that for you they are प्लस इस होटल में खाने की बात कर रहा हूँ आई एम डूइंग मॉक्स फॉर आई एस फॉर बाई जूज इन सेंटर तो वो लंच वहाँ करते हैं तो शेप से आप क्या खाएंगे तो मैं उसे कहता हूँ यार बाजरे की रोटी खिलाए थे गुड़ दे दे घी दे दे और या मैं उससे कहता हूँ तू मेरे लिए बैगन का भाजा बना दे खिचड़ी दे दे पापड़ दे दे एंड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी एंड इस आप हमने और बहुत कुछ बनाया क्यों खाऊँ मैं कुम्पाओ चिकन क्यों खाऊँ मैं आपके आपका नूडल्स अच्छा खासा खाना है एब्सोल्युटली फ्रॉम भटकी दाल टू डिफरेंट भटकी दाल टू चुटकानी टू टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ टाइप्स ऑफ सांबर देयर देयर इज इनफ देयर इज इनफ वैरायटी इन इंडिया टू नॉट टू गेट बोर्ड फॉर समबडी टू जस्ट स्पेंड अ लाइफ टाइम एक्सप्लोरिंग इट एंड एंड मोर वन कुड ईट मोर एंड मोर या ऑलराइट सो दैट वाज अ वेरी दैट वाज वेरी जॉबल फॉर मी आई डोंट नो वी डिस्कस्ड इनफ ऑफ लॉ बट व्हेनेवर यू सेंट द क्वेरी ऑन लॉ आई वाज अ लिटिल कंफ्यूज्ड क्योंकि लॉज अबाउट फूड आर डजन्स एंड दे आर टाइम स्पेसिफिक एडिट्रेशन वाला कौन सा है ब्लैक मार्केटिंग वाला कौन सा है किस एरिया में किस चीज़ के सब जेनेटिक मॉडिफाइड क्रॉप में क्या है एंड मोस्ट पीपल आर अन इनफॉर्म्ड अबाउट मोस्ट पीपल आर इनफॉर्म एंड प्लस द एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ द फसाए इट सेल्फ हैज बीन वर्क विद विद पवन अग्रवाल आई एंजॉय वर्किंग विद देम बट इट डिपेंडेड ऑन द इंथुजियाजम ऑफ द पर्सन सी ओ ऑफ द एफ एस आई एट अ पर्टिकुलर टाइम कि कितना काम एफ एस आई आई करेगी दे वॉन्टेड टू डू अलॉट ऑफ थिंग्स की हाइजीन ठीक है लोगों ने कपड़े कागज़ के दस्ताने पहनने शुरू कर दिए सर में प्लास्टिक की टोपी पहननी शुरू कर दी तो चार्ट थोड़ी हाइजीनिक हो गई गार्बेज डिस्पोजल थोड़ा बेटर हो गया बट दैट्स इट बट इवन बिफोर दैट सर द एंट्री पॉइंट ऑफ समबडी टू गेट अ फसाई रजिस्ट्रेशन इज ऑल्सो वेरी दैट इज अ प्रॉब्लम विद इंडिया ऑल वी थिंग यू रेगुलेट समथिंग एंड द एंट्री बैरियर कम्स एंड करप्शन बिकम्स एट दैट स्टेज so when they made the entry entry point at 100 rupees for anybody who wishes to apply not only that i would say ki licensing bhi to hui hai restaurant khole ke to licensing kahan se hogi police wale ke denge aapko licensing hmm. phir ek safety inspector aayega phir ek municipal inspector aayega phir ek entertainment inspector aayega everybody would want a freebie and when that when you so some other time perhaps we can go into laws specific i uh, did one podcast on the food no, up, uh, uh, food laws up. in india and yeah. we had a consulting chef of lupera uh, the uh, the bakery brand that has been going Achha. on and i have also like run restaurants in the past so Kabe. one was in lodi road one was in lachpat nagar lodi road mein kaun sa tha there was one restaurant called house of tikka it operated for a year nahi main i never went there uh, it shut down on uh, uh, before the second lockdown unfortunately Achha. बट अच्छे दो तीन अच्छे इंटरेस्टिंग लोधी मार्केट में है गप्पी whole food culture and why would anybody pay more and more for the same food that they can get for my best the catch again you know the economics of food business has nothing to do with the quality of food business but you go to bukhara you go to dampok you pay through your nose kab dal ke sale 800 rupees de rahe hain aap aur 3000 rupees aap ran ke de rahe hain 
वो दो रन मिला के एक रन कर रखी है यू नो आई दैट आई थिंक इज अ रिप ऑफ दे आर दे आर चार्जिंग यू फॉर द ब्रांड सो बट अ लॉट रियली गोज इन टू establishing a procedure that oh, that, that company delivers is, the that company is basically run on cigarette business yes and they diversified when they thought the excise on cigarettes will break their back which did not happen and they have managed the environment rather well so i enjoyed their food but i think is grossly overpriced and it is obscene in a poor country like india i should also feel bad because i was also selling dal for 800 rupees uh, you should be kicking yourself <laughs> no <laughs> nothing justifies that मुझे लगता है कि आप विदेश में जाइए आप अच्छा खाना खा रहे यू गो टू मिशन स्टार रेस्टोरेंट थ्री मिशन स्टार रेस्टोरेंट आई वर्क विद मिशन रिलेटेड रेस्टोरेंट बैंकॉक कहाँ यार बेवकूफ़ी की बात है आप अच्छा खासा खाना खा लेते हैं तो मतलब सौ डॉलर तो बहुत ही ऊपर होता है हाँ बट सर उसके लिए फिर जाना और वो वाइट मक्खन सॉस करना टू फ्रॉम द वेरी सॉस ये बात समझाओ कि तुम्हें हिंदुस्तान में सफेद मक्खन नहीं मिलता साला मुरथल के थाने में तो दना दन पेलता है आजकल तो उसका उसने लूटे वो क्या न्यूट्रलाइट डुअलाइट लाइट करना शुरू कर दिया है बट आई आई डोंट बिलीव इन दिस आई थिंक बेसिकली देर शुड बी अ मार्कअप बेसिकली देर शुड बी अ मार्कअप फॉर लाइट गैस पावर एयर कंडीशनिंग एंड सोन मगर ये थोड़ी की थाला मतलब आप मतलब हमें सूतियाँ ही बनाने पर आमादा हो जाएंगे जेब काटने पर आमादा हो जाएंगे सर द मार्कअप टू नॉट यूज न्यूट्रलाइट इज समथिंग दैट इज नॉट दैट डजेंट जस्टिफाई द फाइव स्टार मार्किंग एट ऑल नो वेर इन द वर्ल्ड यू पे आई मीन यू पे फॉर एक्सेप्शनल रेस्टोरेंट बट एन एवरेज रेस्टोर जो आ गए थे ना औकात में कोविड के बाद फिर घर में डिलीवरी शुरू हो गई थी ना एवरीबडी थर्टी परसेंट वाला टैक्स 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 भी नहीं हो रहा था आई थिंक आई विल मैं फेवरेट मेरा सबसे फेवरेट है जोरावर कालरा के रेस्टोरेंट्स जो मार्कअप है मगर बेहूदगी नहीं है बड़े पोर्शन हैं पाँच सौ छः सौ रुपये की प्लेट है जो दो लोग ऊपर शेयर कर सकते हैं डैम गुड मील्स गुड क्वालिटी फूड गुड एम्बियंस यू पे फॉर एवरी थिंग आई डोंट माइंड पेइंग फॉर ऑल इन्स the good restaurants united coffee house never any problems vietnam no problems uh, copper chimney no problems because these are the restaurants which charge you for air conditioning for ambiance for mahol but give you good food to mujhe dene mein itraz nahi lagta okay i'll get a for bank only food for instance no problems these are the restaurants which are continuing the legacy big chill big chill big, big chill again never a disappointing be aaj tak to nahi hua hai it can happen any time i hope but very good chalo we'll have we'll do we'll definitely uh, look forward to have a, uh, enjoying a dining experience yes. with you if that's ever possible sir good chalo uh, with Thank that you. with Thank that you so with that uh, i'll conclude the episode it was definitely a different episode than i have ever had because clearly i come with my own set of theories searched of the internet which are not very popular and most of them maybe not valid also <laughs> yes absolutely popularity is the only one part um uh, and at the same point of time i i am able to sell 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 those theories however good for you <laughs> with you i had all the Glitch, some glitches absolutely and i uh, i'm really happy that it happened in the first place because that no i greatly enjoyed myself well thank you so much sir it yes. was a lovely uh, lovely podcast with that we conclude episode 3 of wakil lane it was on the food culture the laws not per se the laws that are applicable to the food industry but the philosophy and psychology which have which is behind shaping these laws in the first place thank you so much sir with that i'll call it adjourn i hope you like the a podcast if you're watching us on an audio platform you can watch us on a video platform if you're watching us on a video platform you can check out our blog if you are like our blog then hey we are already there on only fans subscribe and with that let's call it adjourn